expected on the football fields of the South. For football at Georgia Southern in Georgia, it is not only a rite of passage, but a way of life. Gladiators of old have secured the right of tradition in Statesboro and Athens. This afternoon at Sanford Stadium, the new gladiators of the gridiron continue the tradition of football in the South. It's the Eagles versus the Bulldogs next. We welcome you to Athens, Georgia, and the University of Georgia's Sanford Stadium. 93,000 on hand to watch the season opener that matches the Bulldogs against their in-state rivals from Statesboro, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Rath, but not since the halcyon days of Herschel Walker has a Georgia team entered the season with such high expectations. At number three, Georgia enjoys its highest preseason ranking ever, and they are one of a very few teams that have a legitimate shot at the national championship. My partner is Dave Archer, and Dave, yes, Georgia is very deep and very talented, but what separates them as an elite team is that they are blessed with fantastic leadership. The two Davids, David Green and David Pollock. David Green is closing in on all the Georgia passing records currently held by Eric Zier. But he, what he does is win. He's 32 and eight as a starter. And his partner since childhood is David Pollock, the motor and the energy behind this football team trying to become the first three time first team All America since Herschel Walker. Their opponent today, the Eagles of Georgia Southern, a team that has dominated one double A football like no other. They've won six national championships over the previous two decades. And Dave, they get it done a little differently with a triple option attack. They really do. And Chaz Williams is the guy that's going to run that show, their quarterback. A tremendous 2002 season, Southern Conference Player of the Year, 27 touchdowns, plagued by a knee in 2003. The guy he's going to hand the ball to is the reigning Southern Conference Champion Player of the Year. And that's Jermaine Austin, rushed for over 1,400 yards last season. The stage is set, and we, like you, can't wait for the opening kickoff. The Georgia Bulldogs, the Georgia Southern Eagles. Tom Meach Leather, when we come back to Athens right after this. It's being brought to you by Huddle House. The Georgia Bulldogs take the field at Sanford Stadium for the first time in the 2004 season. And when they start this ball game offensively, quite a different look at tailback. Here's Laura Oakman. Danny Ware is about to do something no Georgia freshman running back has done in six decades. And that start a season opener. No, not even the great Herschel Walker did it back in the day. But just a few minutes from now, Ware is going to step onto the field and into the spotlight. You think he's nervous? Let's just say I could feel his butterflies sitting in a chair across from him. Just been anxious to get started and uh, been thinking about how the crowd's going to be, how the crowd's going to react to me, um, how I'm going to do under pressure, how I'm going to do against the blitz, everything. Just everything, like a million things are running through my mind. So he's young, so he's nervous, but he's also very confident. I asked him, maybe a goal. What does he want to do for his debut performance? He said, I'd be happy with 100 yards rushing. Not bad. Georgia has won the toss. And they have deferred. Georgia Southern will receive. Mike Seawalk's ball club will get the ball first. And Mike telling us yesterday that the Georgia game has already helped his team. When you go through your preseason camp and you know your first games against the Dogs, everybody picks up the picks. And the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs is Mark Richt. 30, 13 and 1 is his non conference record. He's never lost a non conference regular season game. The only loss was in a bowl game to Boston College. And ready to unveil the 2004 Dogs in front of what will be the largest crowd in Georgia football history today 92,746 at Sanford Stadium. They have waited these long weeks and months for the brand new campaign. 
and it is here. Part of the intrigue with this new Georgia team is a brand new kicking game. Billy Bennett is gone. This is Brandon Katu. He'll be doing the kicking off in this game. Andy Bailey won the job in camp as place kicker. And deep. That's number two, Lewis Barr for Georgia Southern. He's back there with Teddy Kraft as we are ready for football. And great to have you with us. Third time that these clubs have met. The previous two meetings here in Athens. The first time was 1992. Out of the end zone. David Pollock think he's juiced. He leads the Georgia Bulldogs defense onto the field brought to you by Huddle House. Pollock has his old buddy back at defensive end. Will Thompson returns after an injury. Golston and Anderson up front. The linebacking crew different today. Derek White starts ahead of the suspended Odell Thurman and Tony Taylor the weak linebacker also out and in that secondary. Thomas Davis the free safety is the leader back there a linebacker playing safety. Chaz Williams is the quarterback of the Eagles. And already a quick check at the line. Play clock at two. On the option Williams goes nowhere. Chaz Williams is a senior. As we take a look at the Eagles starting offensive lineup brought to you by Huddle House from Apopka Florida a couple of years ago when he played the full season healthy he ran the ball nearly 300 times you'll see him carry it quite often today last season a major knee injury cost him four games and when he was hurting before the surgery Georgia Southern lost two out of three on the toss this is a red shirt freshman Marquise Maynard getting the carry Maynard at 5 8 170 starts ahead of the injured Kevin Davis at slot back today Jermaine Austin the featured back the fullback and T.J. Anderson is the other slot Teddy Kraft starts at wide receiver P.J. Pan Pantrell the other wide out and the men up front Paul Collins you see there number 77 he started here at Sanford Stadium as a true freshman in the last game these clubs played the year was 2000. Maynard on the toss. Over the 30 and a first down for Georgia Southern. Out to the 32 yard line. Bob you talked about Kevin Davis not being able to play. He's a major factor as a senior not being able to play but this is the fill in guy. Marquise Maynard. Watch the speed get to the corner good blocking on the edge. And Davis has to come over and make the tackle. So this is exactly what Coach Seawalk wanted. He wanted to come out and establish his offense, get a couple first downs. Austin over the 35 to the 37. Dave, for the fans watching who are not that familiar with the triple option offense, we should point out how important it is for the fullback because he is going to have that ball stuck in his belly on every play virtually every play Bob they must establish the fullback as that keeps the interior three players the linebackers and the two tackles locked in taking care of Jermaine Austin second and five this time the Bulldogs were there to meet and greet Austin. The matchup in this game is the is the interior group versus Georgia Southern versus the interior group of this big defensive front Golston. They talked about the matchup. This is actually more even matchup than the Georgia offensive line is going to be against the Georgia Southern defensive line. We'll see that obviously in a few moments. Third down and three. Williams. And his helmet comes off as he gets to the 40 yard line. They'll mark him at the 41. This is going to be very close to a first down. Thomas Davis came up to make yet another hit last season. He led this Georgia team with 138 tackles. He is something special. The change will be brought out. 
Yeah, they're going to call it fourth down and not even oh, measure. They, they're if not going to measure. If I'm a quarterback, I ask you to measure this right now so I get my coach an opportunity to think about what he wants to do. Just a quarterback sweep from Chaz Williams in behind his two slot backs and made a nice run. And it looks like they're going to go, Bob. Not unusual for Georgia Southern and Mike Seawalk. So the first crucial play of the new season. Austin barrels ahead and gets the first down. Went to a power eye set brought in an extra tight end and an actual extra offensive lineman to add the beef in front of Jermaine Austin and then just turn the eye iso play straight ahead. All it is is getting lower than the defensive player. That's what they will do on the offensive front. Got enough surge so Austin could get in and get the first down. David's only two first downs. We've played almost four minutes in this game, but this has to give Georgia Southern a world of confidence. There's the pass down the wing to Kraft. He makes the catch. No out of bounds, they say. Tiptoeing that sideline, Teddy Kraft defended by Tim Jennings. And that was close. This is what this defense is fearful of. The co coach Van Gorder talked about the run, the run, the run, and then all of a sudden the pass. And you can see he's right on the white. Boy, that was close. Tremendous catch by Teddy Kraft. Got in behind the defender. And in a triple option, when you throw the football, you have to make the play. There can't be botched routes. There can't be drop balls. You've got to make the pass catch because they are so rare and it will loosen up that defense some. Jazz Williams checking off the line of scrimmage. Austin straight ahead over the 50 to the 48 yard line into Georgia Bulldog territory. What's great about Georgia Southern's fullback and we saw Adrian Peterson do this many years for Georgia Southern. Now it's Jermaine Austin. It's his ability to avoid the con the uh, traffic at the initial point of attack. Guys laying on the ground. He's up and over. You'll see him jumping over people throughout the day. Super run there. Pick up nine yards. Austin gets a breather. Brandon Andrews comes in at fullback. This is the ninth play of this drive for the Eagles. And Andrews goes straight ahead. Ten oh seven left in the first. Let's send it down to the sidelines and Laura Oakman Georgia Southern seems to me to be playing with a world of confidence. I think so. And you know what coach Mike Seawalk may, maybe doesn't even recognize his team from yesterday's walkthrough. He said it was like a scene out of Hoosiers yesterday with players a bit in awe of Sanford Stadium saying this can't be 100 yards and look how high up the seats go. He wasn't worried about their nerves though. He said unless it affected their execution. He told their guys we have to be perfect A minus or B plus is going to get us beat 56 nothing. First down and on the toss it's Anderson and a hard hit by Davis. A penalty flag. Our referee today is Penn Wagers heading up this SEC crew. It's a big time lick by Thomas Davis. He realizes his defense needs a little jump start. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving in the offense at the same time. Penalty five yards. Down remains one. So the first error of the game goes against Georgia Southern. An impressive drive against this Georgia defense that started at the Georgia Southern 20. Well, you heard Laura Oakman talk about how they're going to have to be perfect today. These can, they have to eliminate these penalties. First and 15 is a lot harder to pick up against this Georgia defense than first and 10. And the football back at the Georgia Southern 49. Williams on the toss and he's met and dropped. Tim Jenkins, that was a textbook play of the option. Glenn Van, Jefferson was the pitch man and look at this stick. Coach Van Gorder talked about playing your assignments versus the triple option. They take care of the fullback. They take care of the quarterback and Jennings takes care of the pitch back. 
That's textbook play against the triple option. They get the penalty yardage back though Dave second and 11 as we hit the nine minute mark in the first. Austin. Austin was stopped by to the Georgia 42 yard line Harrison and White combine on the tackle. This is where Georgia Southern's different than most teams Bob is. They still will run the football in a third down and long situation. Third and seven here. They still are a running team. A lot of teams would go to a pass set here. They'll still run the football, which causes a problem for the defense of Georgia. They now have to defend both the run and the pass, which is normally not the case in a third and long situation. And rarely do you tackle them for a loss because they run that option right on the line of scrimmage. Eight oh five remaining. Mike Seawalk wants to talk things over with his senior quarterback Chaz Williams. We'll return to Sanford Stadium right after this. Mike Seawalk, the head coach of Georgia Southern, talked about the preseason hype of the Georgia Dogs. We like to play a Division One team. We just don't like to see them on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That's the thing I don't like to see all the time. But uh, they uh, they're definitely they're definitely solid. <laughs> I think that everybody's going to be scared now. <laughs> you know, they said a lot of guys asked me at the Rotary, they said, Coach, think those players will be scared? I said, players? <laughs> it's not limited to that. I said, we got a bunch of people in this community be scared for their kids, too. I said, Dave Archer, they don't look scared to me. No, they've come out and played. I guarantee you there are a few butterflies flying around that guy's stomach this morning, too. Third and seven. Georgia has not touched the football in this first quarter. Williams down the sideline, nobody home. Wanted to run to Anderson on the slot back on a little wheel route, which is a flattening down the sidelines, but Georgia defended it extremely well. Blue was there. Greg Blue cut off Anderson, did not allow him to get down the sideline, and Chaz Williams made the right decision, threw the football away. For Georgia Southern. The punter is Dan Jordan. Tyson Browning, the deep man for the dogs. Is it blocked? Yes. Pollock got in there. And the ball's out of bounds. This is one of the most amazing things about this Georgia team the last couple of years their ability on special teams to make blocks in the Richt era they have blocked now nine punts eight field goals two PATs. Seven forty eight in the first Georgia gets the huddle house. The students are back of course here in Athens and now the Bulldog Nation returns the first weekend of football back here at the University of Georgia second block punt of Pollock's career gives Georgia the ball first and ten and its own 33 yard line the southpaw David Green back to work and he's looking pretty good coverage forces Green to run and he gets a couple of yards. Let's take a look at the Georgia starting offense brought to you by Huddle House the senior David Green. Starts 2,100 yards shy of surpassing Eric Zier as Georgia's career passing leader. Quite a collegiate resume. They wanted to throw the ball on first down, Dave, but nothing was available. Audible at the line of scrimmage had a play call from Mark Rick. He changed it at the line. Danny Ware, his first carry to the 39. And as Laura Oakman reported earlier, Danny. Becoming the first freshman since the 40s to start an opener for Georgia. The rest of the skilled people, Des Williams at fullback, Reggie Brown, Freddie Gibson, familiar names. You look at the men up front, this offensive line was a batter last year. They gave up 47 sacks 
Hope to do better, of course, this season. One of their big goals to kept that number way down. One setback, three wides. Brown, McClendon, and Gibson in the game for Georgia as wideouts. Where to block the pass is complete, but taking a knee is Freddie Gibson at the 46-yard line. That's enough for a first down. Nine starters return for the Georgia Southern defense. This lineup brought to you by Huddle House. Everybody back up front, Cabral, McIntyre, Hadley, and Jude. The linebacking crew, you saw them there. And the secondary, Lewis Barr is a junior, all Southern Conference performer and a tremendous leaper. On the toss, Reggie Brown cuts back nicely. Reggie Brown to the Georgia Southern 39. Nice little wrinkle. Reggie Brown, the wide receiver, lines up at the tailback position with a little toss play from David Green, and he had a convoy of blockers out in front. You see the two big fellas coming out in front of him. Great speed. Reggie Brown gets in behind, and then good blocking down the field. Picks up a big gainer. Reggie Brown from Carrollton High School led this Georgia team in receiving last year. First down for the Dogs, a 14-yard pickup. Where to the outside. Pretty good containment by Lewis Barr on the corner. Well, this Still is where we talk. Pickup. This is where we talked up the matchup is going to be really tough for Georgia Southern because this massive offensive line for Georgia coming off the ball and destroying the first level. Good block there by Williams, Des Williams, and then Danny Ware gets in behind and was one tackle away from going to the house. And Dave, you touched on it earlier, this mismatch, the Georgia offensive line against Georgia Southern. That's what made that first drive so impressive for the for the Eagles, that they could eat so much clock and shorten this game. Shorten the football game, exactly right. Coming with the blitz, Green incomplete. Intended for Williams. Some of the things that Georgia Southern is going to have to do to offset this physical disparity between their uh, their defense and the Georgia offense is good. They're going to have to come with some blitzes, and that's exactly what they do here. They blitz right into a play action pass and rush David Green into a poor throw. Tariq Muhammad was the man number 23 putting on the pressure. For all of the Green's great play, the touchdown interception ratio was not to his liking last season. 13 touchdown passes and 11 picks. Throwing complete at the 15. Brown to the 10, down to the nine yard line. First down, first and goal, Georgia. This whole drive epitomizes why David Green has been the guy that a lot of people point at as a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. Green checked off at the line of scrimmage, knew the blitz was coming from the secondary, got the ball quickly to Brown, and Brown almost breaks it for the touchdown. But it's Green's ability to see things before they happen. That's why he's been so successful here at Georgia. For today's game was to make a play just like this score a touchdown put Georgia in the lead and listen to 92,000 plus cheering your wish young Mr. Ware has come true Andy Bailey to kick the PAT pushed it a bit but through the uprights to make it seven nothing a true freshman from Rock Park, Georgia, via Hargrave Military Academy, Danny Ware. Welcome to the SEC. A 7-0 Georgia advantage with 432 left in the first. The NFL on Fox returns September the 12th with a doubleheader. Game one matches the Bucks and the Redskins, followed by the Giants and Philadelphia Eagles. It all begins with the pregame show at 12 noon Eastern time, the NFL is on Fox. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer, Laura Oakman with you from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. An eight-play, 68-yard drive that took only 316 
off the clock wears 10 yard touchdown run his first as a bulldog. Brandon Katu is the kickoff man. Jason Foster, number four, Lewis Barr, number two, the deep man for Georgia Southern. Foster retrieves and takes a knee. One more look at the wear touchdown. Yeah, just a few moments ago, this offensive line came off the ball and did a tremendous job. Daniel Inman, Nick Jones create a nice crease, and Danny Ware just gets downhill. It's always fun as a running back when you can go downhill and not sideline to sideline. And that big offensive line, and they're really going to be the key to how good this Georgia team on offense is throughout the season. How good is that offensive line in front of David Green? Georgia Southern gets the football for the second time. A very impressive 13 play drive to start the game, but no points. Just a yard. Great pursuit on the corner. Well, the defense is back out on the field. Laura, Danny Ware is getting a well deserved breather. He's done nothing every night but dream about this game. And he said every dream was the same. It began with the first drive. Touchdown. After the play. As that felt, that's pass. nothing compared to how good he feels right now. He is sitting on this bench. Every player, offensive, defensive, coaches have come up, given him a kiss on the head or a rub on the head, and he just looks like he is living the dream right now. The Bulldog Nation has been reading about him and hearing about him and watching him in camp. Now they see for themselves what a special back where is. Personal foul against Georgia will give Georgia Southern an automatic first at the 35. And this is Austin breaking and gets it out over the 45 to the 47. Thomas Davis had to jump on his back. And great action inside on that play. Day. Well, good read by Chaz Williams. He has the decision whether to give it to Austin or pull it out. And it looks like Jermaine has stayed down on the field. And this is a guy they cannot afford to lose. Southern Conference Player of the Year last year. Over 1,400 yards rushing. You've already seen how good he is in the middle and dodging the traffic. Jazz Williams reads the tackle. The tackle gets upfield, and he goes ahead and gives the ball to his, his partner in crime, and he gets up the field. Got a little rolled up. Thomas Davis rolled up the legs. Look back on the tackle. You see the leg gets pinned underneath. Looked like maybe an ankle. That doesn't look good there. Jermaine Austin. Helped off the field. And you're right, Dave, that doesn't look good at all. Six carries, 33 yards, and now the mantle goes to Brandon Andrews to take over at fullback. But they don't come any tougher than Jermaine Austin. Well, you know he's going to sit out of this game. He's going to do everything he can to get back in it. He got him a first down before he left. This is Andrews. Dogs swarmed to him at the 45-yard line. Andrews is actually a little bit bigger player than Jermaine Austin is. Austin, believe it or not, is only 5'8", 205 pounds. Brandon Andrews comes in at 5'11", at, uh, 215 pounds, so a little bit bigger player. You see he has that nice burst, that early burst to get through just like Jermaine Austin does. In Georgia territory for the second time. At the 49. Williams. Complete to the 43-yard line. Lenon Jefferson makes the catch. Playing his first collegiate game. In one double-A football, Delaware, the preseason number one, as we check our Polaris Ranger League leaders, Representing the Southern Conference, Wofford at four, Furman at seven, and Georgia Southern at yeah. number 10. How about the Southern Conference? And in two weeks, right here on Fox, we'll have that Georgia Southern Wofford game down in Statesboro. Jazz takes it himself. 
Does he have the first down? That's the question. Gerald Anderson, his first tackle. The officials take a look. It is a first down. It's a good decision by Chaz Williams. He realizes only just a yard to get the first down. Why go through the entire triple option? Just get upfield, get the first down, extend the drive, move the chains. His decision making has been really good so far in the game. When to give it to the fullback, when to pull it, when to pitch it. And looks, Dave, like the quarterback he did two years ago. He really when does. When he was 100% healthy. A lot of confidence. Andrews to the 40. David Pollock credited with the tackle. This offense is like the water dripping on your forehead if you're a prisoner because they're going to keep dripping it on you and then all of a sudden something else is going to happen and you won't see it coming. Anybody who thought that they were overmatched their offense against Georgia's defense had better rethink it. There's a lot of talented players on the Georgia Southern side offensively. Andrews. Finds a little bit of wiggle room to the 36. And from the Georgia defensive perspective, Dave, you know that the teammates and the coaches are saying, make a play, make a play. And Georgia Southern just continues to run the dive, the triple option, and then all of a sudden they spring that pass, and you can't get beat deep in this. Now it's going to keep coming because Thomas Davis and Greg Blue are going to start creeping up, trying to stop the run, come up with a big hit, and all of a sudden, Kraft or Foster or somebody's going to slip deep. Andrews, first down, Georgia Southern. If Georgia Southern can play mistake free football on offense, and by that we mean no penalties and no turnovers. They've showed against the number one defense in this first quarter, Dave, that they can stay in this game. Well, you really got to credit Sims and Wayne and Moat. Those guys in the middle, those are the two guards in the center that have been coming off the ball against the Georgia front, Golston and Anderson. They have really controlled that area of the football right now to allow them to run that fullback. 20 to 20, it's great. Can they get it into the end zone? They're down seven. Williams throws it off target. Incomplete at the 19 yard line Jefferson the intended receiver and it's a good play call by coach Seawalk and his staff a little play action fake here and now he's going to try to get the ball to the outside to Jefferson and has him open and Chaz just didn't make a good accurate throw he actually had his player open on the sideline would have got him a first down and Dave that's the point you were making earlier about the passing game and the triple option when it's there you have to capitalize the toss to the 25 yard line goes Maynard. But really a good job by Greg Blue here. Blue's block, blocked by the by the outside receiver Teddy Kraft. You'll see it at the top of your screen the play action. There's the there's the pitch. Now Blue's being blocked by Teddy Kraft plays off the block and then makes the tackle. Very physical football player as, as is Thomas Davis. Six foot two 215 pounder. Loves to hit. And Jermaine Austin. Looking a little better, but still being taken back to the Georgia Southern locker room. Twisted his ankle. Seven nothing Georgia. We're coming to the end of the quarter. And a seven nothing lead for the Georgia Bulldogs. 92,746, a Sanford Stadium record today for the opening game of the 2004 college football season. The third ranked Georgia Bulldogs in a battle with Georgia Southern, 7 0 Bulldogs at the end of one. Here in Athens, Bob Rathman, Dave Archer, Laura Oakman, great to have you with us. Eagles football at the Georgia 25. Williams keeps it. 
to the 15. First down, Eagles. This option defensively can be maddening. It's a great job of Chaz Williams doing what he's supposed to do at quarterback because he fakes to the fullback and he sees the end gets too far upfield. So instead of option in the end, he just follows the fullback straight up through the hole. The offensive line got a nice push from the from the defensive front to the second level, which is the linebackers. And Chaz Williams, he's as dangerous as it gets at the quarterback position. Andrews, just shy of the 10. Andrews to around the 10. Dale Dixon makes the tackle. Can't see enough about this offensive front. Turner, Sims, Wayne, Moat, Collins creating some creases so these running backs can get room to run. They're playing against the number three team in the country. And a touchdown here will pull them within a point. Second and five. Breaking a tackle is Maynard. Inside the 10 at the nine yard line. Marquise Maynard, red shirt freshman, 5'8, 170, playing his first collegiate game. This is something, Dave, this young man will remember the rest of his life. Oh, you got that right. This is a tremendous scene here. Almost 93,000 on hand. This is what he envisioned when he played football. It's third down. Another long drive for the Eagles. This one to date, 13 plays. And 71 yards. They're nine away from Pater. Third and four. On the toss. Shy of the first down at the six. Maynard lost his headgear on the Greg Blue hit. Now it's fourth and one and decision time for Mike Seawalk. Boy, how much confidence do they have in this youngster, Maynard? This is down in the scoring zone. They pitch the football to him. He hangs on. Fourth and one. Going to bring the big crew in. They're going to go at this Georgia defense. Andrews has the first down at the Georgia four yard line. Well, we talked about a potentially devastating injury to Austin, but here's Andrews, and they haven't missed a beat. Andrews has not missed a beat coming in. He lines up in the position Austin did on the short yardage play earlier in the football game. Super job. That Really, all that is is guts. It just, just comes down. I'm going to come off, and I'm going to hit you in the mouth, and can you keep me from doing it? And Georgia Southern is smacking the number three team in the, in the, in the mouth right now. Eight first down for the Eagles. Now first and goal, Williams. Back to the line, maybe a, a slight gain. Pollock was there. The first man to get to him. Uh, David, David Pollock, very active off the backside, Bob. Throws closed down and tackled the quarterback there. Seawalk and his staff are watching that. May look for a little misdirection coming backside. If Pollock continues to crash down the line of scrimmage like that, nobody responsible for the boot out the back. This is the 17th play in this drive. And to the two yard line goes Gershitz. Well, you can bank on the fact that Georgia Southern will now run the football two more times. They will. There is no field goal in this group. They would have kicked it on the fourth down play earlier. They did not. It's now two downs to get it in the end zone for Georgia Southern right here. Gone to their big package, big group in the game. Two tight ends and a power on. Gersitz to the one, and that's it. Maybe a half a yard away from the goal line. Fourth down. What's it in Greg Blue coming in from that safety spot. Almost a linebacker in this situation on the goal line. Derek White also there.
Greg Blue over the top with his mates underneath to shut him down. Andrews back in. That tail gets it. Spins in. Touchdown. Georgia Southern. Tremendous individual effort there, Bob, because he was hit in the backfield. Georgia had gotten the had gotten some penetration against Andrews. Andrews now grudging the hamstring. I don't know how deep they are at that position. They certainly don't need to see Andrews coming out of this thing. He gets hit in the backfield here. Georgia gets penetration, but he spins off and continues upfield. These two fullbacks, Andrews and Austin, they're ability to run in traffic. Tremendous effort. And it looked like the celebration may have uh, put a little strain on the hamstring. Dudley in to kick the PAT and tie this game. 10 3 left in the first half. And the penalty flags. Dave Archer, that was a 19 play, 80 yard drive against the number three team in the country in their stadium. That's incredible. And their starting incredible. fullback got hurt on the drive. Wow. Offsides on the defense, made contact, have to distance to the goal, retry. If there was any lack of confidence, and I have not seen it in the Georgia Southern group, then it's gone now. The Marshall transfer, Jonathan Dudley. Out of the Trey Hunter hold. And this one, ladies and gentlemen, is tied. Georgia 7 and Georgia Southern 7. 10.03 to go, second quarter from Athens. 7-7. Seven, seven. And this is Brandon Andrews. He was the backup fullback. He scored the touchdown, but then after came up and maybe a cramp. We'll check out that for you. 19 play, 80 yard drive that took 9.29 off the clock. And we're down to 10 03 in the second. Time of possession off the chart. Georgia Southern, 16 minutes, 41 seconds. Georgia, 3 minutes, 16 seconds. Brown and McClendon deep awaiting the Dudley kick. Brown. Nope, he'll take a knee. We talked about the excitement in Athens. What do you think they're doing in Statesboro right about now? They do want to know, Georgia Southern fans, about the fullback situation, the injury to Jermaine Austin. Let's send it down to Laura. Yeah, because, Bob, they have the momentum, but they're also paying the price right now when it comes to the backfield. Brandon Andrews, first of all, let me start with him. He just left the field with a cramp. They're trying to cool him down. He should be fine back in the game. As for Jermaine Alston, sprained right ankle. He is undergoing x-rays right now. His status for the remainder of the game will not be known until the result of those x-rays. We'll get him to you as soon as we have him. Now the Georgia Bulldogs. First and 10 from its 20. Touching the football offensively for just the second time. Danny Ware. Gang tackle as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Eric McIntyre, number 70. The first man get to get to him, making his 20th consecutive start as a defensive tackle in this game this afternoon. Well, this is where they'd like to keep this Georgia offense is in a third and long situation if you're a Georgia Southern fan. Georgia would like to give you productive on first down, so David Green has an entire playbook to go to. Brown, the motion man. Green will throw it to him. All of that for a two yard game. Lewis Barr, the tackle. Third and long. It's a quick screen to the outside to Brown. Good block by Brian McClendon on the corner. But good job of rallying by the defense to get to the football. Just the, the quick screen to the outside. You see McClendon 16 there with a good block. But here come the Georgia Southern Eagles. Good coverage. Julius Barr makes the play. Pressure, throws. 
incomplete. Reggie Brown, the intended receiver, but James Young had other thoughts. He got some real good pressure from Brian Krantz up, uh, early in the drop, made David Green slide up in the pocket. He was late with the throw. And then James Young finished off the play for the secondary for the Southern uh, Eagles. And uh, how about this? Lee Jackson is the Georgia punter today. Gordon Ely Kelso suspended for today's game. Lewis Barr, the deep man. He's standing at his own 33. Jackson last punted in high school. He's a junior. Barr gets to the outside. And a return of maybe a yard. Arnold Harrison down there chasing him. A 45 yard punt. As we check our Pepsi fan of the game. Nice to see that your passes made it to the game on time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he didn't look too happy in the face right now either, does he? Brandon Andrews is back in at fullback for Georgia Southern. So a three and out for the Bulldogs gives it back to the Eagles. And Andrews nowhere up front. Well, Georgia has to play assignment football on defense. And it really is, they have broken down up front. They've allowed that middle three, Sims, Wayne, and Moat to control the running lanes for the fullback and the quarterback. And so now Coach Van Gorder really has to make sure that they play assignment football because there's really nothing to go over on the sideline. They practice this all week long. It's just a matter of doing what you're supposed to do. On the offensive line of scrimmage, penalty is declined, second down. We should point out, and coaches Rick and McWhorter said to us in our meetings yesterday, we're facing a club that leads the nation in 1A and 1AA in running the football. They know what they're doing. Williams on the option. Positive yardage for Maynard out to the 40. It will set up a third down, a second, uh, excuse me, a third down in about three. Boy, it's fun to watch this thing when it works right. The triple option. Jazz Williams is going to fake to the fullback, step around and option the end. That's Will Thompson. He pitches outside and then look at the blocks on the edge by Jefferson and Cantrell that free the running back to pick up the eight yards. Great job by Lennon Jefferson. Making his collegiate debut. And isn't Thomas Davis for Georgia all over the field? Eight tackles in the first half. Well, it's scary when your safety's having to come up to make so many plays, though, Bob. On the option, Williams. He'll toss it. And Georgia's there. Jefferson got the toss, and as soon as he grabbed the ball, Greg Blue was in his face. A penalty flag. We talked about how Greg Blue likes to come up and hit you. He did there. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men were moving, same time. Penalty is five yards. That remains third. This moves it back to the 35. Looks like maybe a little early movement in the offensive line. This is the first time Chaz Williams, I thought, made the wrong decision. They got to take care. They got to take care of the football. They cannot afford to turn the football over in their end of the field. That was a dangerous pitch. Really was bailed out by his running back there because Blue lit up the pitch man. Third and eight. Williams to pass. He's got a man downfield. Too long incomplete. Cantrell had a step, maybe two on Blue, but the pass was just a touch long. Wow. That's what this thing does. It's his option does. Play fake to the fullback in the middle. And then Cantrell gets in behind Blue. He's there. The Chaz is just a little too long with the throw. But that'll make your stomach go in your throat real quick if you're Coach Van Gorder. Dan Jordan 
And his first punt blocked by Pollock. Tyson Browning back to receive it. Line drive, Browning 35 40. To the 48 and great field position for Georgia. There is a penalty flag at the Georgia Southern 46. After the play was over, dead ball, personal fouls on both teams. The results will be no foul whatsoever. They will offset. First and 10, Georgia. Mike Seawalk of the Georgia Southern Eagles, toe to toe with the third ranked Bulldogs, a timeout in Athens. Georgia's largest Ford dealer, Allen Vigil Ford, is now Atlanta's extreme high performance headquarters. From the all new Ford GT Supercar to Ford's F 150 Lightning, the official truck of NASCAR, to Roush Performance Trucks, Allen Vigil's got them all. Plus, we can customize any new Ford truck. We can lift them, lower them, add larger wheels and tires, modify the engines for extreme performance. College football Saturday and number three, Georgia, with its hands full. Danny Ware, the first freshman to start an opener at tailback in more than six decades, has the lone Georgia score. A ten yard run of the first quarter. He gets it here. And to the midfield strike. Danny Ware has rushed the football five times in this game for a grand total of 29 yards. Interesting to note, Dave, Georgia did not get a 100-yard game from a tailback last season. Well, and they really haven't been able to put their physicality on this Georgia Southern defense. They haven't been on the football field, so they really haven't been able to wear this defense out. Green on the center this time. On second and eight. To the tight end, Milner. Martrez Milner, the starting tight end, his second career reception on this play. Uh, it's just a great read by David Green. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Linebacker step up on the outside to come after him. He three step drops it and hits his tight end right down the pipe. I just continue to marvel at David Green's ability to see things before they happen. Where? Cuts back. What impressed the coaches so much about this young man, Dave, is his physicality. Yes, he's got all the moves and the speed, but he likes to hit people. Real good poise, too. He's patient at the point. It's a draw play. Watch how patient he is. He waits, he waits, gets a great block from Desmond Williams, and then gets in behind the big offensive line, and then he finishes the run. Danny Ware prepped at Hargrave Military Academy. And the Bulldog Nation learning about this young man in short order. To the eight. Danny Ware got this opportunity because Craig Lumpkin was injured in the very first day of practice. ACL tear in the left knee, and Lumpkin is out for the year. Craig had earned the starting tailback job in the spring. Well, many thought this was going to be tailback by committee. Ware was going to be the starter, but you'd see a bunch of them. Ware has been the featured back throughout the first half. Again, David Green looking at what he sees and changing things. Ware to the six. The Georgia coaches didn't have a lot to go on in terms of the Georgia Southern defense because they've changed defensive coordinators. Joe Tressy came in to Statesboro this year to re redo the defense. Well, I really thought they could they they thought they could come off physically and just beat them up just run their offense and beat them up and Georgia Southern has risen to the task.
Blair on the toss. To the three yard line. A real yeah. good job there by Eric Hadley. Bob yes. he comes off from his D tackle spot and lays a real nice lick on Ware as Ware turns it up and tries to go north and south with this. Hadley's 98. Going to play down the line. You see Hadley close it quickly. Butler's there. Super job by this defense. Now the new place kicker. Billy Bennett's replacement is Andy Bailey. His first field goal attempt of his career. 21 yarder. Good. George is back in front. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Bulldogs 10. And Georgia Southern 7. 10 7 Georgia and reminder to those of you watching on FSN South the Southern Sports Report College Football Scoreboard Show comes up right after the game. We'll have scores and highlights from this big opening day. In football. Olga will be with us and we'll have the complete wrap up here from Sanford Stadium. Have you seen the little house they get down there for August? Oh, yeah. It's got an air conditioner in the back end of that thing. Catered. It's the whole deal. It's nice. <laughs> 2.40 left in the half. Katu the kickoff. Foster at the nine. And that's it. Out to the 18. Dave, we were talking during the break, and I thought you made an excellent point about what a crucial two minutes and 30 seconds of football this is for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has done such a good job of taking care of the football and shortening the game. And by that we mean holding on to the football and not allowing Georgia's offense to be on the field. They can ill afford here in the final 2.30 of this, of this first half to lay the football on the ground, turn it over, or have a short series and give a short field back to the Georgia offense. They've played the game they want to play to this point. From their own 19, first and 10. Andrews at fullback gets the toss on the option. Takes it out to the 22. T.J. Anderson with the big stick. Anderson's going to miss his block on the edge on the triple option. Fake to the fullback. Option the end. Pitch it. But he gets uh, gets no block. That's Maynard. I'm sorry. Maynard, 26, the freshman, misses the block, and Anderson gets buried. On the toss. Jefferson. And a first down. That's exactly what you said, Dave. Pick up a couple of first downs. They get one right here. Clock rolling at a minute 47. They've played the, the type of first half they wanted to play. They wanted to be in the football going into the second into the football game, going into the second half. And they're content with letting the clock run here and pound out a couple first downs and go in at 10-7. Georgia Southern's 10th first of the half. Pressure by Pollock. Loose ball. Georgia football. Mike Seawalk, the Georgia Southern coach, is asking, was Williams' arm going forward? Should that be an incomplete pass? Well, it was certainly close. Pollock was closing hard. Chaz Williams, it didn't look like, it didn't look like to me the arm was going forward. It looks like the ball comes out before he gets the arm going forward. Here comes Pollock. And I tell and you, he, the ball is out well before the arm begins the throwing motion. And I'll tell you something else that Seawalk was arguing at the end of this play. He is saying, we've got the ball. Now look at under the pile. Watches the ball hits. Georgia falls on it now. 71 is in there grabbing the football. That's Chad Mott. And Seawalk is saying that should be our football. Yeah, the referee had already signaled without even checking what was going on there. And Mott had, or uh, Moat had the football. Well, this is exactly what I said can't happen to Georgia if you're a Georgia Southern fan. And it's definitely the delight of these 93,000 on hand today for the Georgia Bulldogs. New tailback is Cooper. They fake to it. Green goes to the sideline and Gibson stretches to the 10. 
Down to a minute 12 remaining in the hand. A lot of time left for Georgia. Three timeouts, over a minute left. Green's going to burn a timeout here. A minute 12 remaining in this second quarter. Georgia getting the break that they needed here to reestablish their superiority in the game and deflate the Eagles. Well, this was a scenario that just could not happen to Georgia Southern. It's certainly what Georgia had hoped for. Little surprise that Coach Seawalk with a minute 20 left on the clock would try to throw the football with Chaz Williams in that situation. David Pollock. The two time All America closing on Williams and the, the ball is out clean. There is no question of whether it was a fumble or not. Now the question is who gets the football. Now watch the referee's signal. You don't see it there. The referee's signal comes before he really sorts this thing out. Moat 71 is going to dive in and he actually digs the ball out. And you see the ball underneath Moat. He's got the football and the signal goes to Georgia. Wow. First and ten. Green. Tipped. Is it intercepted? Yes. Earwood picks it off. What a play. Now they wave it off, Bob. Oh, they say no. It hit the ground. And Seawalk again can't believe his eyes. Watch the effort of the Southern defense. The ball's popped in the air. Oh, just it's off his ground. Just out of his grasp. Good coverage by the secondary. Again, Green forces this ball in. Trying to get the ball to Gibson, it looked like. Georgia Southern stops the clock with 102 left in the half. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. We'll take the break with them. Time out in Athens, 10-7, Georgia. Georgia 10, Georgia Southern 7. 102 left in the second quarter. Bulldogs have it at the Georgia Southern 10. Green. Pressure incomplete. Pressure that time from McIntyre. Michael Cooper was in at halfback. They wanted to throw the screen and could not get Cooper free. He was in with the blocking assignment. They wanted to free up and just could not free up in time. Good pressure from Eric McIntyre right up through the middle for Georgia Southern. The dogs one of three on third down to the first half. Third and goal and another Georgia timeout. 56 seconds remaining. Now one thing you got to remember is this is Georgia's first football game of the season so there's going to be some rustiness and things that go along with running your offense. Timing is going to be a, an issue. You try to simulate that in practice. You cannot. It only comes through game time, uh, game experience. And although the George is extremely experienced on offense with with their skill guys, the receivers certainly, and David Green, they still are going to have some problems with the timing. And Georgia Southern's playing at an extremely high level right now, uh, so they're creating some problems for Georgia also. Coach Rick was telling us yesterday about his main goal on offense today was can we come out and execute effectively for 60 minutes to their defense they haven't had the football that much they really haven't and so the rhythm has been a difficult thing to establish certainly for the quarterback David just hadn't had the ball in his hands very much big play for the temperament or the perception that Georgia Southern goes to the locker room room with right here Danny Ware is back in at tailback for Georgia Pressure and dropped at the 13 to Sean Jude from his defensive end position. 
the senior from Atlanta. Good job by Jude. Just a speed rush to the outside. He beats Roland. The big 6-9 tackle. You see it the, the right side of your screen. Oh, a spin, spin move to the inside. Beats Roland. And Green has no chance. He was looking to the, throw it into the end zone on that play. Andy Bailey attempting a 31-yard field goal. He hit a 21-yarder earlier. This one, perfect. That's a victory for the Georgia seven. Southern defense. I was just going to mention that to you. It really is. And, it, and it, it's got to deflate Georgia a little bit, although they realize that they have all the weapons and can come back in the second half and do some damage, but certainly see some rustiness with the, with the offense here at Georgia. The NFL on Fox returns September the 12th with a doubleheader game one as the Bucks and the Redskins. Joe Gibbs back at the helm in D.C. That's followed by the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. It begins with the pregame show, of course, at 12 noon Eastern time. The NFL is on Fox. 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter. The preseason number one, Southern Cal. And they had their hands full with Virginia Tech in the opener a week ago. Number two is Oklahoma. And in the SEC, three and four, Georgia and LSU. Big game coming up next Friday night between five and six. That game was obviously moved from Monday because of the hurricane, but the Hurricanes will take on the Seminoles on Friday night. 92,000 plus, Dave, and you can just about hear a pin drop right now. I think a lot of Georgia fans with this elevated expectation level for this team thinking hey number three preseason everybody's talking about how great we are we got a chance to win an Astro championship and now you've got your hands full with Georgia Southern from a fan perspective you can feel the mood deflating in the stadium you really can and as a group of fans you really have to kind of take it on yourselves in the second half to try to lift the ball club and uh, you know David Pollock's gonna be jumping around asking for that enthusiasm Katu with the kickoff Barr and Foster, the deep men for Georgia Southern. This is Foster at the 13. Breaks a tackle. Gets a block. And out of bounds with two seconds to go in the half. Tim Jennings ran him out in front of the Georgia Southern bench. Great effort that time by Foster. Well, a lot of these Georgia Southern players have tremendous speed. They're just undersized. Foster is one of those guys. He's only 5'9", 165 pounds, but he runs 4'4 four, four in the 40. There's not going to be a lot of guys out on the field that can run with him, not to mention the fact he's a little tough to bring down. 33-yard kickoff return. So this will give the Eagles one more play. Well, it'll depend on how they feel about their protection, whether they let Chaz Williams throw a Hail Mary pass down the field, try to get one of these guys... The tip ball. Three men come wide to the near side. Williams goes down the sideline. Incomplete. And Teddy Kraft, oh boy, was he open. Williams overshot his man, but Kraft was looking at a potential oh, touchdown on that one. Unbelievable. Kraft wins clean. He catches that. It's a touchdown. There is a penalty marker down. Ineligible receiver on the offense. Penalty is declined. Halftime. Kraft ran out of bounds and then came back in. Let's go down to the field and Laura. Everybody was expecting a blowout except for you, Coach Rick. You kept saying this was going to be a battle. What have they done to you the first half to get your offense out of its rhythm? Well, the offense hadn't really done that bad of a job. We didn't score the touchdowns in the red zone again once we did, but. Uh, the problem is they're holding the ball, doing a great job of controlling the ball. And, uh, you know, we've had four possessions on offense and scored three out of four. So it's not bad. I'd rather have touchdowns. But uh, the big thing is can we uh, slow down their offense enough to where we can get uh, some three and outs? You said the first half was going to be a learning curve. What have you learned about your team? Well, you know, we're going to find out this second half. The, uh, again, the, we knew we couldn't simulate their option. And now these guys have played a half of it against the speed in which they do it. So hopefully that'll make a difference for us in the second half. All right. Good luck. Thanks, coach. Mark Richt, the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. The intensity of an opening day. Third rank Georgia entertaining Georgia Southern and the men from Statesboro. 
giving the Bulldogs some difficulties. 13-7 Georgia at halftime. Speak when it replaces. To do was to keep the ball away from the Georgia offense. Jonathan Dudley. The kickoff man for Georgia Southern. Thomas Brown, number 20, 16, Brian McClendon. The deep men for the dogs. Third quarter underway in what must be a very shocking score that's going out across the country so far this afternoon. Number three, Georgia leading by only six. This kickoff goes out of bounds and a penalty flag. So Mike Seawalk's defense. Kick out of bounds. First down, 35-yard line for Georgia. Uh, he's talking to his co talking to his kicker right there. That's not a that's another mistake that you just can't overcome. That's yardage that they get given to them because of a penalty. David Green. We have not seen DJ Shockley to this point in the game. Where is the tailback? Williams, the fullback. Green throwing. Gibson. Into Georgia Southern territory at the 47 yard line. Fred Gibson, his senior season, arguably the most talented receiver in Georgia history. I'll tell you what, this is some uh, respect because you don't see the corner come into the picture until he comes up right there to make the tackle. Lewis Barr was in Marlboro country on that one. A penalty flag on the play. Our referee today is Penn Wagers heading up this SEC crew. He's from Charleston, South Carolina. After the play is over, dead ball, personal foul, number 87. The offense did gain the first down, so it still be first down for Georgia. But the football will go back 15 yards. A lack of discipline there by Milner. He's a junior. He knows better to do those kind of things. And Coach Rick has got to start to wonder about his team a little bit now. This, this, you heard Coach Seawalk talk about the first 10 minutes. Really, it's the first five minutes of each half that coaches really concern themselves with about the tempo, and then you settle in and play the rest of the game. On the play action, Green to Brown. 40 to the 39. Reggie Brown. Boy, is he talented physically. I've seen Reggie Brown run the I ISO toss play, and here he is at receiver, and this is what he does best. Look at the push to the inside, completely turned the corner around on the comeback route, and then David Green is perfect with the throw. Picking on Lewis Barr on that left side of the Southern defense. Brown was asked in the preseason who might catch him from behind. His response was Superman, maybe. First and ten, Georgia. Where? Up inside to the 37-yard line. Eric White, number 41, with the hit for Georgia Southern. Well, you can see the body language of the Georgia Bulldogs coming out, and there's an intensity level that we did not see in the first half. They're coming out with a purpose and trying to establish this high-powered offense. Second, and we'll call it seven. Pressure on the corners, Green throws. Gibson, oh, a great one-handed juggling catch. Out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 26. The man from Waycross. Yeah, the 6'4 wide receiver from Waycross. This is a guy that needs to step up this year. Looking to go to the next level. Spectacular catch, one-handed stab, gets both feet down. I'll tell you another thing that happened there, the young freshman running back, Danny Ware, picked up the blitzing strong safety that allowed his quarterback to get the ball out of there. That was one of the things he was worried about getting done. Tight end Milner flips to the right side. Green will run to the 20. 
second down. A good coverage this time by Georgia Southern. David Green after play action fake wanted to get the ball to Reggie Brown again, but this time they rolled James Young, the safety, to the side of Lewis Barr, the corner, and they had him doubled. So Green pulled it down and did the next best thing, got five yards on the run. Georgia at the 21 yard line. Where? Impressive. Right side of the Georgia offensive line gets it done here. Milner gets the block to the outside. Good seal by Desmond Williams. And then Ware goes downhill. And all good backs like going north and south. Offensive line clears a nice path. And he delivered the shot as opposed to taking one there. And Hargrave, he averaged nearly 12 yards a carry. Ware gets it again. Touchdown, Georgia. His second touchdown of the game. You could just see the intensity level of the Bulldog offense when they came out. Green was throwing the ball with a purpose. There was good protection up front. And then when they decided to run the football, they're coming off. And if you see the Southern players don't appear until the goal line, that means that Georgia offensive line is pushing them back to the next level. 12 carries, 72 yards, and both Georgia touchdowns in this game. Andy Bailey, the PAT. 20 to 7. Georgia takes care of business. They get the ball to start the third quarter, put it in the hands of Danny Ware, and he delivers big time. 20 to 7, Bulldogs. 20 to 7, Georgia leading. Let's send it down to Laura Oakman. Georgia Southern's about to get it back. Laura, they'll do it without Jermaine Austin. Out the third best rushing season in Georgia Southern history. That's a big loss. X-rays, they did not like what the X-ray showed, basically, and just said it's a sprained right ankle. They don't want to take any chances. Coach Seawalk telling us yesterday he doesn't want any of his guys getting hurt today, so they're going to rest him. Brandon Patu with a kickoff for the Bulldogs. This is Roger King on the return. And a burst of speed over the 25 to the 28. Let's go back down to the field and Laura. Well, Mike Seawalk told us yesterday and today, he told his players it's not about the first barrage you're going to see at the beginning of the half because there's going to be one. You're going to see one at the beginning of each half. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about how you guys respond to it. He told them what he needed to in the locker room, and now he's relying on his seniors right now on the field and up and down the sideline to grab these underclassmen and say, you just got punched in the face. What are you going to do about it? Andrews does nothing about it here. Guess who was on his back? David Pollock. Pollock is going to turn up his intensity. Watch his defense rise up. The, the offense did what they needed to do. They need to come out and establish themselves. They did that, both physically running the football and David Green throwing the ball. Now Georgia Southern has to answer the call or David Green's going to be back on the field again. Six tackles to go with a sack and a blocked punt. On the option. Desperately trying to hit the corner is T.J. Anderson. Greg Blue just kept coming. The Bulldogs blessed with two outstanding men in the secondary, Thomas Davis and Greg Blue. And we talked, Dave, about the, the temperament of your defense. And you've so desperately been waiting all spring, all summer, all camp to make a big play, but you still have to maintain your responsibilities against this triple option. Assignment football, Coach Rick talked about it at halftime. Now they've seen it for a half. They saw it, they, they felt the speed of it, how it works. He expected his team to play better in the second half. Third down and four.
incomplete. Jefferson, the intended receiver. Pollock with pressure. Davis defending. Well, Georgia is not holding back now. They've got a feel for what they want to do. This is a pressure. They blitz the outside linebackers, and Pollock gets a big lick on Chaz Williams. And, of course, Thomas Davis is right there on the coverage. So Georgia's done exactly what they wanted to do when they went in at halftime. We need to get the football, take it down for a touchdown, come out and stop them, and give our offense the ball back. Dan Jordan, the punter. Tyson Browning is deep. Kicker is back. Nice cut back by Browning. He's gone. Well, the punt wasn't very high, Bob, and it allowed the Georgia to get their return set up. And you just give Tyson Browning just a crack, and he's going to take it the distance. He can really run. We saw that on the 93-yard screen pass last year against LSU. He has the ability to put it in the end zone. Andy Bailey's extra point. Georgia by 20. 72 yard punt return for Tyson Browning and the Georgia Bulldogs seizing full control here in the second half untouched Georgia 27 Georgia Southern 7. College football Saturday from Athens Georgia. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer, Laura Oakman with you. Boy, no finer place on a Saturday afternoon for the college game. Browning's punt return is our play of the game brought to you by Bex. Well, you see the punt short, Bob, and that allows Georgia to set up their return. Some fine blocking. See Reggie Brown there get looking for somebody to block, and then Tyson Browning in the open field is as dangerous as there is in the country. Makes the kicker miss, and it's, he's off the race. A 72-yard punt return, and has broken the game open at this point for the Georgia Bulldogs. First time that the dogs have been able to take a breath in this game. A little bit of a margin now. 20 points with 10.49 left in the third quarter. Kutu's kickoff. Roger King. And Georgia Southern will bring it out to the 20. Now what's going through the minds of these Eagle players on offense? Well, you hope that Coach Hewak has pulled his guys off the side and said, we got to do this one play at a time like we did in the first half. We cannot try to score. There is no 20-point play that we have. We've got to establish ourselves, again, shorten the game down, go down and get a score. They certainly, it's imperative they now go down and get a score as Trey Hunter now will come in at quarterback replacing Chaz Williams and this is something they want to do and you'll see it probably for Georgia Shockley will probably play for Georgia they like both their quarterbacks to play Brandon Andrews with his 11th carry of the game he has done the bulk of the work at fullback as Jermaine Austin Injured ankle and out for the rest of the game. 11 carries, 33 yards. See him stand there talking to his quarterback, Trey Hunter. Trey Hunter is a quarterback that's probably a better passer than Chaz Williams is. He still has the ability to run the option and do the things that he can do, but Trey Hunter is probably the better passer of the two. On the toss, Maynard rolled up. By Thomas Davis, his 10th tackle of the game. Good run by Maynard, but boy, he paid for it at the end. Maynard's 5'8", once a perfect option play off of Will Thompson right there. Maynard turns it up and look at the lick from Thomas Davis. That's 6'1", 230. 6'1", 230, hitting 5'8", 170. Wow. Thomas Davis was bred as a linebacker here at Georgia. They moved him to free safety. 
And he will play at the next level, folks. Make no mistake about that. Wow. Andrews. Jarvis Jackson had a handful of jersey. So the drive has started exactly the way Coach Seawalk would have wanted. They picked up a first down. They get a nice gain now to the fullback, and they want to get back into their game plan. There's still enough time in this game for them to put a couple scores on the board and make this thing interesting. Andrews. Andrews denied. Catch more college football on Fox College Sports to see if you get Fox College Sports. Contact your local cable provider or call 1-877-2-GET-G-E-T. Log on to foxcollegesports.com for more information. Georgia Southern 5 of 11 on third down. Had a lot of success on the edge on third down. An option play to the edge or a roll, quarterback sweep, something of that nature. Hunter, just a couple. It's going to be shy by two yards of a first down. Will Thompson did a great job that time of crashing inside. He obviously did not have to play contain. He was turned loose. He must have had somebody behind him defending him. He was able to crash the quarterback, and Trey Hunter had no choice but to turn it up the field. Well done. Will Thompson missed the entire year last year. Bob coming back off the knee and the ankle, and has, mm -hmm. has had a has a solid game today. What a big day. Nearly 20 months have passed since he last played a college football game. Those numbers from two seasons ago. Fourth down. And one yard, they say. Today, Georgia Southern, three of three on fourth downs. Timeout. Timeout. Eagle. Timeout. Georgia Southern. We'll step aside. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Mike C. Walks Eagles down 20 and a big fourth down staring at them when we come back. You're looking at Georgia defensive coordinator Brian Van Gordon. Gorder, Laura, he was a little nervous about facing this triple option. Isn't that funny? Because if you talk to Georgia fans, they all said this was going to be a cakewalk. But Van Gorder told us, uh-uh, this game is scary to me. He said, basically, what I told my players was, take everything I ever taught you guys and throw it out the window. And we've seen that this game. We've seen a patient Bulldog defense, which we all know is not the norm with this defense. Van Gorder said there wasn't a lot of scheming for this game. He kept it basic, kept it simple. And he said they really won't understand it until the game goes on. Archer, what do you think? Does it, does, does it look like they're getting it? Yeah, they're getting it. Fourth and goal. Hunter takes it straight ahead. First down for the Eagles, or so the players claim. Let's see what the referees say. First down. They got it. And the reason he was so wary of playing this triple option offenses they don't see this this just isn't run in the SEC you, you see the I formation type teams like Auburn and they're going to throw the football and but you just don't see a team that runs the triple the true triple option like Georgia Southern does that's why he was so concerned Eagles now four of four on fourth downs and the touchdown came on a fourth down play Andrews into Georgia territory at the 46 this Georgia Southern team Last year averaged 335 yards per game. That led one double A, and it also led one A football. And Mike Seawalk's attack, and this has been the staple of Eagle football uh, for years, it has garnered the respect of, of the coaching fraternity. As Mark Rick was telling us yesterday, this is their baby. This is what they do well. The players take so much pride in it. And they they know how to run this offense. Georgia says, wait just a minute. T.J. Anderson is brought brought down by Thomas Davis. Well, the key to this play is Thomas Davis plays off the block of of uh, slot back Marquise Maynard. Maynard's 5'8", 170, trying to block Thomas Davis. It's just not going to happen. Davis is going to be at the top of your screen, and 26 is Marquise Maynard. He is not going to get that block. And he makes the play on Anderson. The 
option down to the 39 yard line. Gersitz on the carry. And you could see from the Georgia defenders, there's a lot of looking around. Where's the football? Well, the thing it's, that I've marveled at so far in the game has been the ability of Georgia Southern to feature that fullback play. That's their bread and butter play. Yet three different players have come in and been able to, to establish themselves and run through the middle of the Georgia defense. First down for Georgia Southern at the Georgia 39. Hunter throws. Kraft has it. Out of bounds at the 27. Talked about Trey Hunter, and he's a little bit more accomplished passer. And you saw with that throw, much more on the target. And these are these throws are there for him because they're running the ball so successfully. A little play fake to the fullback, quick three-step drop, and bang it outside your wide receiver for a first down. These are there were a couple plays like this in the first half. Chaz Williams missed his opportunity. Trey Hunter much bit more accurate with the football. Another first down for Georgia Southern, their 14th of the game. Fullback Andrews to the 22 yard line. Staying patient. Yes, the clock is running, but this is what George, Bob said this is what Georgia Southern does. They continue to pound you with the run. They've run the football 44 times in this game. For 160 yards. Hunter. Complete. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Jefferson with a great grab. Trey Hunter, a 22 yard pass play. And the spirit is back on the Eagles sideline. And again, it comes off the play fake of the fullback. Slot back. Leon Jefferson, you watch 31 to the left side of your screen, just releases straight up the field. Georgia wants to stop the run. You see Thomas Davis trailing the play. That's what this offense will do to you. Jonathan Dudley, the PAT. And it's 27 to 14. Lanon Jefferson, a redshirt freshman, in his first collegiate game, scores a touchdown in front of 92,000 plus at Sanford Stadium. And keeps hope alive for the men from Statesboro. 27 14, Georgia. A great day for the game of uh, football in the state of Georgia today. A game like this just does wonders for the collegiate attention and also high school football. 79 players from Georgia dot the roster of the Eagles, 52 from Georgia, and they're all playing in front of the largest crowd to see a college football game in this state. What a day. Now Georgia with the football and Brown on the return. And a nice tackle is made by Georgia Southern's specialty man that time as coming down the field was Lance Turner the fullback on special teams to make that play. Now the Bulldogs have it and uh, you're right Dave Archer right on cue here comes DJ Shockley for his first appearance. Well it's really a perfect scenario for Shockley to come in uh, for his first appearance on the 2004 season. His season was shortened a little bit last year because of the injury. He's looking for a big year this year and a new tailback. Freshman Thomas Brown, the third tailback used by Mark Rick today. And Brown has it over the 25 to the 26. Thomas Brown is another true freshman. 5'8", 167, uh, excuse me, 185. This is a young man out of Tucker High School who broke his leg as a senior and still had close to 1,000 yards and 17 touchdowns. What's interesting about how Brown has moved up on the depth chart is the fact that he missed about two weeks of camp with a bad hamstring. Second down. Shockley over the middle. Incomplete. Brown, the intended receiver. Coverage from A.J. Bryant. It's a pretty good throw from Shockley. Puts it on the money, but I think Brown heard the footsteps as Bryant was coming.
third and eight. There goes Shockley. First down at the 36. Tremendous running threat. Well, this is part of the changeup that Coach Mark Rick loves about DJ Shockley coming into the game. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But Georgia Southern's been confident that David Green isn't going anywhere. He's going to stay back there. Whoa, wait a minute. Number three's back there. Shockley has the ability to make people miss and get up the field. Takes a look, doesn't see anything, and this is where he's really dangerous. He really has the, he has the ability to go the distance from anywhere on the field. Shockley sprints and throws, and it's incomplete. Fred Gibson, the intended receiver, and Tariq Muhammad had that baby measured. Well, that's a really good job of Muhammad flowing with the play, and getting the hand mm. over there to knock it away. There was a lot on that ball. Boy, T.J. Sockley turned that one loose. <laughs> Makes an old quarterback proud. <laughs> A little mustard on that throw. It's interesting to watch the changes in offense. You see Shockley doing the rollout, and you'll see he even features a quarterback draw with DJ Shockley that you don't see, obviously, with David Green. Crusher. Gibson went out of bounds. They're going to bring this one back. Freddie went out of bounds, came back in to catch it. Referee marked the spot back at the 35-yard line. The receiver went out of bounds because he was forced out of oh, bounds, man. came back in immediately, made the catch. This is legal. First down, Georgia. If you're pushed out. I'll tell you the what, play I, will stand. I don't know about that one, Bob. That was borderline at Lewis, Lewis best. Barr sticks his arm out, and Gibson decides to run out of bounds to avoid him. I don't know if there was any force out there, but they get the benefit of the doubt. So give Gibson the catch. That play went for 49 yards. Shockley. To the three. Well, you see why they're so excited that DJ Shockley decided not to transfer and stay here. You see right at the end there as he's coming from out of bounds. Can't really tell there whether Lewis Barr pushed him out of bounds. It looked like he just kind of stuck his arm out. But both referees saw it both through the hat, so both concurred on the force out call. Shockley, two carries, 22 yards. Touchdown, Georgia. Thomas Brown he introduces himself to the Bulldog Nation, the true freshman. Scoring so freshman today Ware and Brown in their debuts with a grand total of three touchdowns. That's a good run by Brown. Just the eye formation. eye toss get in behind the big fellows and find a crease. He sees it and goes downhill right there. Good solid blocking at the point of attack. The catalyst of that drive though after the good run by the youngster was DJ Sockley two big runs to extend the drive. Andy Bailey tacks on the point. And with 2.18 left in the third quarter, Georgia back to a 20 point advantage. Dogs 34, Georgia Southern 14. Well, the tailback future of Georgia looks pretty bright with those two young guys. And we haven't seen Tyson Browning carry the football. He ran that punt back. We haven't seen Tony Milton today. So an embarrassment of riches for George at the tailback spot. You can be the judge on this play on the sideline for Gibson. 
forced out. Mm. Yeah, I just don't see the force out there. He stuck his arm out, but I don't see him forcing him out. But here's the play at the end, and watch Georgia push the Southern defenders back. Big block right there at the point by Dennis Rowland. And the youngster <laughs> fell in right behind his six foot nine, 315 pound tackle. Seven plays, 76 yards. Thirty four fourteen. And for the Bulldogs redshirt freshman Brandon Katu will kick off. He's a walk on Bailey is the only scholarship kicker in the program. Katu from Alpharetta. Roger King. Returns it to the 30 yard line. Trey battled the tackle for Georgia. So again uh, Dave it seems the Eagles are forced back into that same situation they had earlier in the quarter and that's to reestablish themselves on the ground. Well it's a big challenge for the Georgia defense too to, to try to come out and stop the run. Not that this is going to be an offense that other people are going to feature but they have to play some teams that want to run the football. There are going to be certain blocking assignments that they see on film that they're going to want to use against the Georgia defense. Chaz Williams back in at quarterback. Throws. Intercepted. Thomas Davis. Well, this is Georgia Southern being a little bit impatient. They've run the football extremely well, and yes, they're down 34-14 with a couple minutes left in the third quarter, but this is a really poor decision by Chaz Williams. He just cannot throw the ball in the crowd. And Thomas Davis has done it all today. He's hit people hard. He's dove and tackled people. He's defended the run, and now he has an interception to add to the resume. Danny Ware in at running back. David Green returns at quarterback. From the Georgia Southern 44. This time Derek Butler leads this charge for the Eagles as Danny Ware was unable to make any yards. Got some of the second team offensive linemen in there now for Georgia. Fernando Velasco was the pulling tackle there lost his footing and that's really why that play did not develop. Ware tried to get in behind his tackle and he was knocked off balance and so there was no place for where to go. Cantrell and Bailey into the game as wideouts. Green over the middle and it's incomplete. It was deflected by Butler. Leonard Pope the tight end was the target. Good read by Derek Butler in the middle linebacker position was in a zone and read the quarterback's eyes. It's the first time I've seen David Green locked down on the receiver. He wanted Miller down the middle. The linebackers looking right at the quarterback. Green stares him down all the way. Linebacker just breaks on the ball. Well done by Derek Butler there at the middle linebacker spot. Green eight of 14 one hundred eighteen yards passing. Complete to Brown. They could get a score out of this. Oh my goodness. Touchdown Georgia. David Green drops the ball picks it up and Brown takes it into the end zone. Forty three yard score. How about that one. <laughs> There's a couple things that stick out about this play Bob. Obviously the tremendous athleticism of Reggie Brown after he catches the football outrun the secondary for a touchdown. 
But David's green, David Green's poise, he drops the football, yet he'd done such a good job with his pre-snap look to understand what was going on coverage-wise, he still knew he had his receiver and he put it on him. There's an injured player and a holdup on the PAT. There is Lewis Barr. Looks like he's cramping up. Forty to fourteen, Georgia. Fifty three seconds left in the third quarter. Reggie Brown. Now Green knows what the coverage is. He drops the football. Now he knows he's got his receiver down the pipe. He hits Brown, and then of course Brown's athleticism is phenomenal to get in the end zone. Makes a couple people miss. But to take your eyes off the coverage and then come back and realize you still have your receiver down the middle, a lot of poise involved there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels good, man. You feel that touchdown pass. You want to go down and pat him on the head. I want to get all the shot off my phone and see how mama daddy out there. And the kick by Andy Bailey to push the Georgia lead to 41 to 14. In front of the largest crowd to see a football game. In Georgia, 92,746 Sanford Stadium on the Georgia campus. It was a tough, tight game in the first half. Dogs have blown it open here in the second. 41 to 14, under a minute to go in the third quarter. One double A Georgia Southern has done themselves proud despite that score. They have given the dogs quite a battle today. In Georgia's home opener. Next week, the Dogs have to play at South Carolina and open up the SEC campaign on the road. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern will open in Statesboro against Johnson C. Smith and in two weeks open their conference play, the Southern Conference, against the Walford Terriers, a team from Spartanburg that won the Southern Conference last year and made a pretty good showing for themselves in the 1AA playoffs. The Southern Conference Unquestionably the strongest one double-A conference in the country. Four teams in the top 23 in the top 10. Trying to stay cool on a hot day. The dogs prepared out to kick off to the Eagles. Interesting to see if Trey, Trey Hunter comes back in the football game for Georgia Southern. Katu's kick. A little short and out of bounds. Coming up to take that ball was Roger King. Mark Ricks at the helm of this uh, Georgia club, his three seasons in Athens with uh, an elite record of 32 and 8. Up there with the big boys, Miami, Oklahoma, Texas, and Ohio State. And so much is expected out of this Georgia Bulldog team. High expectations. They play in such a tough conference and such a tough division. The option comes to Anderson. TJ to the 30. Austin Anderson. And that will take it down to 37 seconds in the period. And now another injured Eagle. This is when the wear and tear of the game becomes a factor, Bob. And they don't, they're not as deep on the Georgia Southern side of the football as, as Georgia is, of course. And these guys are playing a lot more snaps. And so now the fatigue begins to set in. And that's when you get these injuries. This is redshirt freshman Marquise Maynard. Their star fullback, Jermaine Austin. Went down in the first half of this game. Injured ankle. Georgia Southern is at 17 more snaps than Georgia in this game. 55 to 38. But all eyes on Maynard playing his first collegiate game.
Well, Coach Seawalk wants to see his team obviously play extremely well and high level here against Georgia. But their main concern is to get back into their schedule in the, S in the Southern Conference against the 1AA opponents. They have a chance to make a run at a national championship this year with the talent they have. So losing a lot of players in this game obviously puts them in a bad spot when they get ready to play. They got to go on the road here in a couple weeks or actually they play at home against Wofford who made a tremendous run last year won the Southern Conference Championship and beat Georgia Southern at their place. So uh, he does not go Seawalk does not want to lose his players in this situation. And Dave you mentioned that Wofford game that's coming up two weeks from today in Statesboro. Some other key ones to to circle is that October 16th date against Appalachian. Always a tough game at the Citadel. November 6th date at Furman is going to be a key game. And they ended on the road in Miami against Florida International. Was not the kind of year Georgia Southern was used to last year. Did not make the playoffs. Finished fourth in their division. And so they're looking to get back to doing the things they normally do down at Statesboro. And that's play for national championships. Jazz Williams at quarterback. Runs it to the 35. Greg Blue in double figures and tackles now with 10. That's the second time we've seen the quarterback sweep for Chaz Williams. Both times have been successful. He's such a good runner. 2002 was a monster year for Chaz Williams. He was a Southern Conference Player of the Year. Had 27 touchdowns. He's certainly a guy you got to look at when you start talking about the Walter Payton Award that comes up at the end of the season, the Division I AA Heisman Trophy. He and Jermaine Austin will be major factors when it comes to that balloting. One quarter of football remaining in Athens. Jazz Williams and the Georgia Southern Eagles. Watch the Georgia Bulldogs. There to Georgia Southern's 99. Second down and eight. Eagles at their own 38 yard line. Chaz Williams, the senior quarterback, on the give up the middle. And a fumble on the play. Georgia says it has it. Still looking. Arnold Harrison for Georgia's on the bottom of that pile. But it will be Georgia Southern maintaining possession. They continue to continue to run the football extremely well through the middle with the fullback and it's it, at some point this has got to begin to concern Georgia. Watch Harrison on this There's, play strip the football. Ball comes out. There's the ball out and then the Southern offensive line must have come back up with it. But again good solid run through the middle with the fullback. Give to the fullback, Gersitz. And over the 45 for a Georgia Southern first down. Darius Swain, the nose tackle. The back up to Gerald Anderson with his first tackle of the game. Georgia Southern's offensive line has played an outstanding game today. Turner, Sims, Wayne, Moat, and Collins have all played extremely well up front coming off the ball. Williams on the throwback to Cantrell to the 50. So a little wrinkle there, Dave. Well, he'd like to have stayed outside. This was just a, a backside screen. Roll the quarterback front side and throw it back to your wide receiver on the backside. See the tight end and the left side tackle release their players. They're trying to get out in front of the Cantrell on the screen, but receiver, you don't want to go back in there. I had a coach show me one time, old HT lives in there, hard times. <laughs> and he usually wearing number 10. Hard hitting as Gersitz gets it into Georgia territory at the 47. Richard Cook the tackle. Richard Cook is a redshirt freshman. And the dogs behind Pollock and Thompson. 
have some inexperienced folks and a great chance for them to get some game experience. Cook's a redshirt freshman. Quentin Moses is a redshirt sophomore. Steve White's a redshirt sophomore. So a chance for them to get a little PT. The leader of the pack though back there is Davis. Boy, this young man had a remarkable game. Maynard on the toss. He was injured earlier in the third quarter, but back at him. Well, I'm impressed with this little guy. Red shirt freshman. We've talked about his size, 5'8, 170. He averaged 7.2 yards a carry his senior year in high school. So he's he's got the skills. He just he's got great speed. He's a 4'4 guy in the 40, and he runs really hard. He runs much bigger than he really is. Gets his opportunity with the injury to Kevin Davis at that slot back position. Kevin a stress fracture in his foot last week. Gersitz. The Eagles having to go three deep at fullback today with the absence of the injured Jermaine Austin. The great uh, All-America. An injured ankle in that first half. Jarvis Jackson the hit. There's Austin. 16 100 yard games in his career. Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Just needs a thousand yards on the season oh. and now obviously with the injury that comes in doubt but just needs a thousand yards to move into second place all time on Georgia Southern's rushing list. And the incomparable Adrian Peterson. Incomplete over the head of Teddy Kraft. That stops the clock with 10:39 left in the game. Jim Jennings was defending the senior from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Well, like you said, George is getting a great opportunity to play some of their second liners in that front seven, and those guys are going to be called on to make some plays as Georgia tries to make this run towards a national championship. So this play time is invaluable for them. Georgia Southern eight for 15 third and seven on this third down opportunity. Williams throws on the run incomplete. Reggie McCutcheon the intended receiver and again Tim Jennings was right there with him. Williams on the rollout wanted to hit McCutcheon in the in the right curl flat area and uh, the receiver kind of let his quarterback down that time he decided to turn up the field. Before the ball got there. So now Georgia Southern is forced to punt. Dave, how would you rate Chaz Williams today? Running the football is outstanding. I thought he's been he's been tough. He's his decision making has been really good on the triple option. He just not uh, as accomplished a passer as you would like. Trey Hunter is that's more of his strong suit. Dan Jordan's punt. And down at the one yard line. Nice job by Lenon Jefferson. 10 23 left. Georgia 41, Georgia Southern 14. 14, Georgia. And reminded friends, the NFL on Fox returns September the 12th with a doubleheader. Joe Gibbs leads the Redskins up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that will be followed by the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. Coverage begins with the pregame at 12 noon Eastern Time. The NFL is on Fox. Loose ball. Let's see. Shockley on the exchange was able to recover it. DJ back in at quarterback for the Dogs as they have it at their own one yard line. In these situations as a quarterback when you're close to the goal line like that or it's a short yardage play your offensive line is trying to fire out. It's the quarterback's responsibility to ride the center and stay with him so you can get the snap. This is the worst place to get a fumble <laughs> on a quarterback. <laughs> yes. Shockley. Complete. A nice grab by T.J. Gartrell. That is a 21-yard gain. Shockley's been really sharp when he when he came in the game earlier and led his team to a touchdown had a couple runs that put his team in a good position to score and also had to throw to Fred Gibson that that sent him down inside the 10 but he had a real good throw to Reggie Brown on that series that Brown did not catch he's been very sharp with the football throwing.
to the 25 for Thomas Brown. Clock ticking, 9.03 left, fourth quarter. Georgia led only 13 6 at the, uh, seven rather, at the half. A 28 point explosion in the third quarter. And the Dogs now lead it 41 to 14, riding this one out here against the Georgia Southern Eagles. Complete. Intended for Bailey. McBride defending. Terrence McBride, junior from Sumter, South Carolina. Three interceptions in his career, and he picked all three off last season. Starting cornerback. Another one of those guys that runs extremely well, but a small guy, 5'9, 180. But it's another one of those kind of guys that has a real good speed. On third down, Shockley. Pressured. Throws incomplete. A.J. Bryant coming across the middle. He was flattened by A.J. Bryant. So one A.J. knocks off another A.J. Good series of downs there for the Georgia Southern defense that time. Stuffed the run and then were able to defend the pass there and now they'll get their chance to get it back. Lee Jackson today's punter for Georgia. Lewis Barr. The return man for the visitors. Third time that Georgia Southern has ventured to between the hedges. You see Tereshinsky, that's the third string quarterback for Georgia walking around. He's the personal protector for the punter. Is there a flag? No. The punt to the 47 and touched there. Fans booing. They thought that Lee Jackson was interfered with on the punt. Officials say no and a timeout. 8-11, fourth quarter, 41-14. College football Saturday, number three, Georgia. At home to kick off the 2004 campaign against the Georgia Southern University Eagles. 41-14 with 8-11 to play. And the Big run here for Brandon Andrews over the 40 down to the 37 yard line. Well what you're going to need now Bob is the fact that Georgia has now gone to their second and third unit defensively. Some of these guys are second second teamers some are third team guys and they have not had the reps at defending and seeing the speed of this triple option and, and uh, so they're going to have a tough time trying to combat Andrews and all these guys that run downhill for Georgia Southern. Trey Hunter in at quarterback. A 15 yard pickup for Andrews, the junior from Swainsboro. Gets it again. To the 33. Marcus Howard, one of those backup defenders you were referring to, makes the tackle. He's a freshman. 6'2, 215. Southern gets a great opportunity here to really build confidence in what they can get done offensively as they go into their schedule. Andrews looks like he's a more than capable backup or looks like he can be a, a featured guy in this offense with Jermaine Austin's injury. Andrews again. Pounds it to the 28. Well we talked about the Bulldogs going to South Carolina next week. The Gamecocks won big today, 31 to 6 at Vanderbilt. And then it's another non-conference game with Marshall and then look out, LSU here on October the 2nd. Tennessee follows them in on the 9th. It's interesting, Dave, that the, the schedule is so, is split so you have so many home games in the first half and then so many road games in the second half. 
And it'll be very interesting that Marshall game when they come here to Athens to play because it's a completely different team than the team they're playing today. It's a team that wants to throw the football and, and get after you with your passing game. And so it'll be a di completely different challenge for Georgia defensively. And that's the beauty of these schedules. Yeah, these schedules. Now they'll have to go back, go to South Carolina, and they'll have to play against uh, Demetrius Summers at tailback, and and uh, Dondrell Pinkins will be running their their offense. And Lou Holtz has gone to more of a, a veer style of offense, which they'll probably see a little bit of option. Which this game has probably helped them a little bit with that. But then Marshall comes to town. They're going to want to throw the ball over the ball yard, and we know what LSU is going to do. Under six to play. Second down and nine. Hunter. Option to the corner. Jefferson. Well, I'll tell you what, a great Absolutely. block from Teddy Kraft. Down to the four yard line, and that gave Jefferson a chance to stick it yeah, in. Teddy to Kraft's the pylon. gonna come inside right here and get the block right there. Oh, that's outstanding. Monster block. Laid out Keelan Johnson, the freshman safety. And like I said, these guys, these guys hadn't had an opportunity to rep this de this <laughs> offense. And Kraft got a nice lick right there. It looks a little different out there when you're playing against it than it does standing on the sideline. From the two, first and goal, Georgia Southern. 24-yard pickup for Lenon Jefferson, freshman from Guyton, Georgia. Hunter. He is into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, all Trey Hunter's done is come in two series and take him to two touchdowns. Through the touchdown pass in the third quarter, and then he takes his team right down the field, running the option play, and here he goes over in the QB sneak to, to put two touches on the board. And although Chaz Williams is the guy that's featured at their quarterback spot, you got to figure that Trey Hunter, with all the playing time he got last year with Hunter injured, or with uh, Chaz Williams injured, that Hunters want to push for that job to get in the field and make some plays. Jonathan Dudley with 534 to play. Puts the extra point up there to make it 41 to 21. A couple of kids from Effingham County. Jefferson the big run and then Hunter the score. Timeout at Athens. Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Number three, Georgia hosting Georgia Southern, 41-21 with 534 remaining in the game. And if you're watching on FSN South, stay with us. The Southern Sports Report College Football Scoreboard Show comes along. We've got all the scores and highlights from a big opening day of college football, and we'll have the complete wrap-up here in Athens. And to those of you watching in Florida on Sunshine, know that our prayers are with you. We hope that that hurricane passes quickly and the, the damage that's done is minimal. You folks have been socked twice in two weeks. And we're thinking about it. Here's the end over ender. Coming to Thomas Brown, drops it, and stays right there. First down and 10 at the 20 for the Bulldogs. Well, Dave Archer, you talked about the number three club in the country here today, the Bulldogs. In the overall for a first game, how would you assess what we saw here today? I thought they answered the bell when they came out in the second half. I think you you, you find out about your team how you're going to start a game, and then you find out about your team when there's some adversity. I thought Georgia Southern put them under the microscope a little bit, and they they answered the call. They came right out. David Green took his team right down and scored. Then the defense got the stop, and they went down and scored again. And with the Tyson uh, Browning punt return, so you you found out how they were going to answer a little bit of adversity. D.J. Shockley at quarterback. Thomas Brown knocked off his feet at the 23-yard line by Terrence McBride. I would think the Bulldogs will be content to run it out here. Try yeah, to that. try to gain yards, of course, but sure keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving, and the quicker they can get out of there, the quicker they get out of here without any injuries. Go on both sides of the football. Comes to A.J. Bryant. Incomplete. Now that was a big drop right there, Bob. They had the bubble screen set to the left side. The two offensive linemen of that side of the field had released down, and they were going to have a nice running lane. 
had he been able to hang on to the football. A.J. Bryant. Let's take a look at our players of the game brought to you by Nissan. We begin with the Georgia Southern player of the game, Brandon Williams. Subbing for Jermaine Austin for the most part this afternoon. Chocolate still wants to crank it, and it's going to be incomplete, nearly intercepted. The Bryants <laughs> together again. A.J. for Georgia, A.J. for Georgia Southern. And our Nissan player of the game for Georgia, Thomas Davis. Remember last year in the opening game at Clemson, he was all over the place. Same thing today. 11 tackles, a pickoff, sideline to sideline. He is impressive. There's going to be some guys spending a little extra time in the tub because some of the licks he laid out today. <laughs> On fourth down, a Lee Jackson punt to Lewis Barr. Some confusion. Timeout taken Georgia by Georgia. Out. First timeout of the half. Well, we're going to have to send uh, the referee pen wagers a little lemon juice. Yeah, Eagles rush eight. Get past Bailey. He's got him by the ankle. That's it. There you go, Sean. So Georgia Southern will get it at the 48 yard line. The senior season underway for the two Davids, Green and Pollock. And Laura, their lives have been intertwined since birth, it seems. <laughs> And uh, an off-season mishap uh, just extended the story. Yeah, you think close calls happen on the football field like today's first half, not even close. A storm hit Athens, Georgia last month, resulting in a tree hitting the roof of the David's apartment, coming way too close to David Green's bedroom window. Thank goodness no one in the entire complex was injured, leaving the Davids to declare it a good omen for the season. I guess kind of like a bird in the house is bad luck. They've decided a tree through the roof means a winning season. I didn't want to argue with them. I just have never heard that superstition <laughs> before. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with these two guys, uh, born five miles apart, three days apart in Snellville. Uh, youth players together. Uh, the footage we showed earlier and, and uh, have a chance to show it to you again is just priceless. It's wonderful. Kraft makes the catch and he's out of bounds. This youth football, the Shiloh Generals in Snellville, David Pollock and David Green. 40, 44, yeah, I believe, is, is David Green. Pollock and 15 is David Green. There he is stepping up to accept his award, but. There's David Pollock running the football. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, it really is. Pollock, Pollock, though, you know, he's a little animated. He's slim. Rumor has it when David Pollock was born, he slapped the doctor <laughs> and not the other way around. <laughs> Out of bounds. Laura? It's so funny, you guys, because we're so used to whenever you talk about one David, you talk about the other David. And I asked David Pollock the other day, does that ever bother you? Does it bother you that you can't have an interview without having to talk about David Green? And he said, actually, that's the only part of the interview I look forward to. I love talk. I love bragging on my quarterback. They genuinely have such a great friendship. It's so much fun to watch. And they say that's why they want this year to be a championship year. This may be the last year they ever play together on the same team. They want to go out on a special note. Up the middle, Gersich, touchdown. The Eagles put four scores on the board in Athens. Well, it's been fun to watch this Georgia Southern team continue to compete. No matter what the situation was, they continued to compete. They played Georgia to a standstill in the first half, and they continue to compete here in the second half. Again, Trey Hunter on the field as quarterback for another touchdown. He had an integral scramble there right before that as we were talking about David Pollock that extended the drive. 25 yard run for Tim Gersitz and the touchdown. Now the Jonathan Dudley PAT 
and it's 41 to 28 with 327 remaining in the fourth quarter. A look at the Georgia Southern touchdown. Timeout in Athens. Tim Gersitz goes 25 yards for the score, capping a four-play 52-yard drive as Georgia Southern pulls to within 41 to 28. A little onside kick here, Bob? Why not? <laughs> Mr. Dudley will do the honors. Georgia's got nine guys within 10 yards. They are thinking along those lines. Little squibber. Going to be taken by Browning. To the outside. And he just takes it out of bounds. 319 left. And a 41-28 Georgia advantage as they get the football first and 10. Not sure what they were trying to accomplish with that kind of kick unless he was trying to hit one of the up men with the ball. I've seen kickers try to do that, but that uh, just didn't accomplish much for him. On the offensive uh, side of things, first unit guys coming in again, David Green, Danny Ware, Reggie Brown. Coach Rick would like to get a few more reps in for these guys today. Well, I think what he'd like to get is a couple first downs to try to put this baby to bed. Is he a punishing straight ahead runner? Hey, what he's closing in on 100 yards, too. He wanted to rush for 100 and score a touchdown in Sanford Stadium. He's close, closing in on that 100 yards. Where with his 14th carry of the game. And he's now up to 88 for the afternoon. 15 yard gain. He's been outstanding today, as, the, as has the offensive line. It created some tremendous creases for him. Get, getting in behind those guys. He's a great downhill runner, north-south runner, and he finishes runs. He puts a little something on you when he finishes. True freshman, Danny Ware, the first freshman to start an opener at tailback in more than six decades for the Georgia Bulldogs. The last freshman to start a season opener as the primary ball carrier here was Charles Rabbit Smith in 1943. How about that? Because of World War II, the 43 Georgia team started an all-freshman offensive backfield. Smith at right halfback, he lettered from Georgia from 43 to 46. Freshman became eligible in the modern era in 1973. And yes, it's true, Herschel Walker did not start the season as the starter his freshman year. Neither did Garrison Hurst, nor Rodney Hampton, nor Frank Sinkwich, nor Charlie Trippi. So no, but, no, but Herschel was in the game that second week, <laughs> and he went on to rush for about 1,600 yards that year. So, And I know uh, a friend of mine that I played with in the National Football League, Bill Bates, remembers yes. one particular run uh, that he ran through him <laughs> in Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> he still feels it. Yes, he does. I think Ware has some of the plus with tremendous depth the tailback. <laughs> Thomas Brown, a freshman, keeps it moving down to the 42. Denny Ware, rather. I think that gives him his 100, doesn't it, Bob? It should. He had 87 in 14 carries going into that attempt. And the football now at the 42 yard line. I think we've seen some of his toughness. He's up over 100 now at 101 yes. on 15 carries, but I thought that was the first run really we've had to see him show his speed to get to the outside and then turn it up the sideline. Uh, they've done such a good job blocking between the tackles, between the tight ends to create lanes for him going straight ahead. He showed some nice ability to get to the edge and then get up the field. First and ten at the Georgia Southern 42. Where? Bidding for a third touchdown in this game. Driven out by James Young. I tell you what, I I'd start thinking about getting him out of the game. He looks like he's legit, and I don't know that I'd let him play too much longer in this game. 
He's got real good vision. You see him making people miss. He's had a solid afternoon. 27 yards on that one officially. 16 carries, 128 yards, and two touchdowns. Wrestled down to the nine yard line. For more on the Danny Ware story, let's check in with Laura. And at the same time, I respected the fact that he had such poise, but he was so nervous. His legs were bouncing, he was shaking all over the place. And when he said his goal was 100 yards, I almost laughed. I mean, just how, just how humble he was to all of a sudden say that. And we just kind of laughed and said, you know what? The great ones do expect 100 yards in their debut. Why not? He's got 134, so I don't know. Like we talked about, he's young, he's talented, and he might just be pretty darn good. Thomas Brown trying to take it in. Gets it to the one. Yeah. And 17. oh, by the way, we have another freshman running back yes. here named Thomas Brown. And how about this run? Watch him use his speed to get to the outside right here, get around the corner and then up the field. And watch him stretch for the pylon. Just a tremendous run, just shy of the goal line. And they just put Ware back in the game. A third touchdown, perhaps. On opening day, Brown has 19 yards and five carries. Well, Ware got him down there. Why not let him punch it in? And he does exactly that. Real good drive by the Georgia offensive line. Again, Inman, Jones, Tanner, Jim Gillis and, and Roland up front. Just a, a good job of coming off the ball and creating running lanes for their running backs. Andy Bailey. 48 28. Danny Ware came out for one play. Thomas Brown took it to the one, and Ware goes back in to do this. I'll tell you what, this is scary. Did you start talking about number 34 in comparisons? That's something he used to do, go over the top. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but this kid has got some skills. You just hope he can stay healthy and have the kind of career that they're expecting, him for, expecting from him here at Georgia. Talking with offensive coordinator Neil Calloway yesterday, and we're talking about Ware starting the game, and he said he is clearly our best back. And that's interesting. Well, it's been evident today, too, Bob, because he really has played virtually the entire football game. And that's, of course, taking Lumpkin out of right. the picture because of injury of the guys remaining. High praise from your offensive coordinator through one training camp. Yeah, and we really have not seen Michael Cooper, who played a prominent role last year for this Georgia team for the running back spot. Tyson Browning has not played much running back today, so it's been the two freshmen, Brown and Ware, have really carried the load. Browning has not carried the ball. Had the punt return for the touchdown. Oh, they're going to talk about that young man. Less than a minute to play. Well, Georgia Southern came in here and did their job, though, Bob. They yes, came they in did. here and played extremely well. They had Georgia worried at halftime. I guess that's the best way to say it. 13-7 and played really well really owned the football game in the first half but Georgia came out and established themselves physically and took over this football game but Georgia Southern is going to be a tough team to play when they get into their schedule in Division One double-a ball this year Mark Rick said this week I'd rather play a 1a team that's not used to winning than a one double-a team that is wow. and you saw the difference in that first half you sure did. Yeah, there's a tradition down in Statesboro that they don't like taking it on the chin. They did a little bit last year, and I think this is a big regrouping year for them, and they want to lay it on their opponents. End over ender. Bryant with the return to the 39-yard line. 
You know Mark Richt was the offensive coordinator as you know for Bobby Bowden at Florida State. They played Georgia Southern down in Tallahassee a few years back. And even though Florida State went on to win it in the fourth quarter they were trailing Georgia Southern to start that fourth quarter. So Mark Richt has a lot of respect for what Georgia Southern has been able to do over the years. As do so many in college football. Tremendous winning tradition. Mike Seawalk, the head coach of the Eagles, came into Sanford Stadium today as the head coach of the opposition with a winning record in the stadium. As a player at Virginia, he won here. As an assistant coach at, at uh, Georgia Tech, he won here. And as a assistant coach at Georgia Southern, he was on the short end and will go down to defeat here today. But I think uh, made a lot of believers in one double-A football today. Final play of the afternoon. Georgia wins, but they were tested. Our final score, Georgia 48 and Georgia Southern 28. For those of you watching on FSN South, the Southern Sports Report is next. It will be the college football scoreboard show. We'll have all the scores and highlights and a complete wrap-up from this game here.